Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are, we have been discussing about the bacterial cell structure. So we will uh, continue from that. If you haven't observed my previous video, please go through it. Then then watch this video. So the next things that we have in bacterial cell wall are the inclusion bodies. Now inclusion bodies. What are the inclusion bodies? They basically entities within the cell which contain some substances. The first thing that we have are the gas vacuoles. So gas vacuoles, as you can figure out from the name, these are basically gas storing vacuoles. Where are they found? In cyanobacteria, in purple bacteria, or in green bacteria. So they are basically found in these ty three types of bacteria. All right, cyanobacteria, purple bacteria, or green bacteria. So they do not have any covering of its own. So gas vacuoles do not have any covering of its own, but they are composed of gas vesicles and these vesicles can have their own covering. So what is that meaning? Suppose on the right hand side, these, uh, they, these are the small gas vesicles. All right. This is one gas vesicle. This is one gas vesicle. This is another gas vesicle. So as you can see, these gas vesicles have a covering of its own. All right. Which is made up of lipids and lipoproteins but these four or five gas vesicles together constitute one gas vacuole and the gas vacuole as a whole do not have any covering of its own so the the components of gas vacuole are the gas vesicles the vesicles can have their own covering but the gas vacuole do not have their own covering all right so no covering of gas vacuole but individual covering of gas vesicles is present. All right. Uh, now the gas vesicles assemble to form the gas vacuoles. So the main function of gas vacuoles is help in buoyancy regulation and protection from harmful regulations. All right. So main function of main function of gas vacuole is helps in buoyancy regulations and protection from harmful radiations. All right. So the next component that can that can be regarded as inclusion bodies are inorganic inclusions. So inorganic inclusions are those which contain inorganic substances within the bacterial cell. So they are of two types. Number one, polluting granules, which are actually the reserves of phosphates. And number two, sulfur granules, which are actually occur in bacteria living in sulfur rich medium. They are actually reserves of sulfur present in bacteria. Why? Because phosphates and sulfates are necessary for bacteria to get energy. All right. Suppose in case of sulfur granules, why uh, these types of granules occur in bacteria living in sulfur rich medium? Because if you know that there are certain groups of bacteria which are called as sulfur oxidizing bacteria. So what do they do? In sulfur rich medium, you have plenty of hydrogen sulfide. They oxidize sul hydrogen sulfide to sulfur and this sulfur is stored within this sulfur granules to be used later on for energy synthesis. Another thing that you have are the food reserves. This, this is basically they store this food to utilize it in, the, in uh, times of need. So, so this is the cyanophysian starch which are also, also called as the alpha granules. All right. Next we have the beta granules and lipid globules. So these types of food reserves are present. These are basically starch reserves present in bacterial cell. Another thing that we have which is called as the PHB. PHB is basically polyhydroxybutyrate. This is also a reserve of carbohydrate. So the next component that we have in bacterial cells are the flagella. Flagella are unistranded single microtubular fibers. So on the right hand side as you can see these long extensions of the cell wall uh, cell membrane are basically the flagella. All right. So they are 0 0.02 micrometer in diameter and 1 to 7 micrometer in length. So, so see such long length is present that is why flagellas are very long in length. 1 to 7 micrometer in length. And flagella has three parts. 
filament hook and basal body. Now if you observe the ultra structure of flagella, be it in gram negative bacteria or gram positive bacteria, the outermost portion that you can see sprouting out from the cell is called as the filament. The middle portion is called as the hook and the innermost portion which is embedded within the cell wall and the cell membrane, this portion is called as the basal body. Alright, now as you can see in the, uh, the basal body you have four rings. The L ring is present in the cell wall. L and P rings are present in the cell wall and S and M rings all right, are present in the cell membrane. So these two rings L and P are present in the cell wall and S and M these two rings are present in the cell membrane. Now apart from flagella we have another small extensions of the cell wall which are called as pili and fimbri. Pili are longer, fewer and thicker tubular outgrowths. Uh, okay, so in the right hand side you will observe this larger thin, this larger thicker extensions of the bacterial cell wall. These are actually pili, pili and there are also some smaller extensions apart from pili of the bacterial cell wall. These are actually fimbri. Alright, so pili are basically larger and thicker than fimbri. This is one difference. Another difference is that PD develop in response to F plus factor in gram negative bacteria. Now what happens in F plus factor in gram negative bacteria? This is actually when suppose we will discuss it later on. This is the process of conjugation where a bacterial cell has a plasmid all right, where carries fertility factor or F factor. So such bacterial cells are called donor plasmids where and the recipient bacterial cells do not contain any F plasmid. All right. So what happens in such cases? The donor plasma, donor bacterial cell develops a, a pili and transfers this uh, F plus factor containing plasmid into the recipient bacteria, bacterial cell. This process is called as conjugation. So in times of conjugation, this can pili can also develop. Now. Fimbria are small bristle like protein fibers sprouting out from the cell and they basically help in attachment to solid surfaces and host tissues. So basically the difference between pili and fimbria is that pili are larger and thicker, fimbria are smaller and pili develop in during conjugation in response to F plus factor while fimbria they only help in attachment to solid surfaces or host tissue. So they help the bacterial cell to attach to host tissues during suppose the bacterial cell gets a bacterial cell gets into your body then it will have to cling on to the host tissue. So that function is done by the fimbri.